So good morning. A very warm welcome to Lansdowne at Woodbury Avenue. We're delighted to see you here. It's a very uh, special day for us. It's been a great weekend. Uh, so as I welcome online uh, viewers, I want to welcome Baroness uh, Cox, the Right Honourable the Baroness Cox of Queensbury, but we can call her Caroline today, all right? So we may have a peer of the realm in the room, but we can all relax and uh, be as natural and normal as we can. Let me say to online viewers, good to have you with us this morning, but tonight there will be no live stream. Let me give the congregation here uh, a heads up. Tonight will be a, a very interesting program. We have, besides the Baroness, we have three other people who will be reflecting on their stories, their experience of humanitarian uh, relief issues and human rights across the globe. So with Suzanne uh, Averill, with uh, Professor Anna Maslin, uh, and also with Gordon Scholl Rogers, we'll be looking at advocacy, human rights, and the Christian response to global need. And that's uh, for this evening. Then, if you are new uh, uh, or fairly new to Lansdowne, let me encourage you to join us for tea and coffee along with everyone else in the hall as we conclude uh, between the services before the 11.15 congregation arrives. Please join us for tea and coffee. You'll find a welcome point if you're new, and at that welcome point you can pick up a Get In Touch With Us form. We'd love you to fill that in. And you can also pick up this month's edition of lands down life. It gives you all the key things that are happening, some features on uh, the program and ways that you can find out more. Just one element of that coming program, and that is the visit in two weeks' time of John McLernan. Uh, we'll be marking, as many churches will do across the globe, the International Day of Prayer for the Suffering Church uh, on that weekend in November. And John McLernan is a director of a Christian agency working especially amongst Central Asian Churches, So he'll be well worth coming to hear and listening to in the evening of that Sunday. He'll be at one of our big questions formats, and he'll be addressing the question, are all faiths the same? So that's a couple of a weekend's time with John uh, McLernan. But we've come here this morning to worship the Lord Jesus. The, the Apostle John has a wonderful uh, window opened into the realities of heaven in that vision from the book of Revelation. And at one point... In that vision, he asked the question about a group who are dressed in white. And he says, these in white, who are they and where did they come from? And the answer is this. These are they who came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And that's our theme very much this morning. The risen Lord Jesus, who's with his suffering people. And as we are a body this morning, we remember and reflect all the many other believers around the world that belong to us because they belong to the Lord Jesus. And around the throne of Jesus, there is no tear, no crying, no mourning. And so with that vision and perspective, we worship uh, God this morning. We stand to sing, come, people of the risen King. Rejoice, rejoice. Let's stand and sing.
Let's remain standing and let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for the invitation to respond to all that you have done for us in the Lord Jesus with rejoicing, with one heart, with one voice. Oh, Church of Christ, rejoice. And thank you that we've come this morning to hear the Lord Jesus speak to us, to meet the Lord Jesus in his word and by his spirit. Some of us have come and there is joy in our lives just like the sun that's shining this morning. Others have come today and we're weeping, we're struggling, we've got battles that we're fighting. And so, Lord, whatever our situation, whatever the reality that we are wrestling with and experiencing today, may we find our focus and our joy in Christ. May we praise you for forgiveness in him. May we come, some of us with full or empty hands, as men and women of the faith, to find in the Lord Jesus all that we need. And we pray for each other, and we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world today, that together, as your people, every tongue will rejoice. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We have a great and glorious king. Let's praise him. Two songs about his kingship and majesty. Jesus. 
Great. Please find your seats. And uh, let me say again, uh, Baroness, um, we are thrilled that you're... Caroline. 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 We are thrilled that you're here. I I don't think we've ever had a peer of the realm uh, on the platform in Lansdowne, and and, uh, you're therefore breaking a mold, and we're delighted that you're here. And I have some friends with us this morning who want to ask you some really penetrating questions, like Jeremy Paxman might have asked you sometimes in in your work in, in Parliament. So where are my friends? Can they come up and help me with Anna and Ollie? Wonderful. And um, they're going to ask you little questions about mm-hmm. who you are and what you do and all of that kind of thing. So we have handheld mics for them, big voices, people. Okay, so the first question comes from Samuel. Samuel. Are you switched on, Samuel? Samuel. Right, good. Well done. He knows his name anyway. What's your, que- what's your question, Samuel? What is a baroness? Very good question. You know, I hardly knew when I became a baroness. You become a baroness by being appointed to that rather grand-sounding place, the House of Lords. And that's one of the houses of the British Parliament. House of Commons, House of Lords. You're appointed to the House of Lords, and you become a baroness. And I wasn't in that world. I was the first baroness I'd ever met. And it was quite a shock. And you wake up and find a baroness looking at yourself in the bathroom mirror, but you think, well, thank you, God, excuse me, what a privilege. How do I use the privilege being able to speak in the British Parliament? And the message, I think, came from God. It's a very good place to be a voice for those who don't have a voice. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Sam. Next question. (coughs) Do you do any work? (laughs) Do you do do any work? (laughs) Thank you. I love your questions. They're great. You know, I'm very, very old. I'm aged 80. Never. And, uh, yes. And I'm more busy, I work more now than ever before. And I do two kinds of work. I do work, and it's a great privilege, with my little organisation. It's called a charity that tries to help other people. And we work for people who are suffering persecution around the world. So I spend a lot of my time travelling to be with our brothers and sisters And last week I was in Uganda, and we go to many other countries. A lot of my time traveling, a lot of my time speaking in Parliament, and also having the wonderful privilege of speaking in a place that is lovely church this morning. So I work very, very hard. I've never been more busy in my life. I can vouch for that. You work for it. Right, third question. Do you wear special clothes in the House of Lords and the seats of... Comfortable. Uh Are the seats comfortable and do you wear special clothes in the House of Lords? Well, on very posh and grand occasions, the Lords do dress up and they have red robes with kind of white, it's called ermine, a kind of furry stuff. Um, That's for special occasions. If you ever see the Queen opening a new Parliament, then you see all the members of the House of Lords dressed up in those special (coughs) fancy clothes, a bit like red dressing gowns, it's all white collars. Now... I don't often go to those special occasions because you don't have to, and I'm too busy working. (laughs) So I went to one once when I was a very new member, and I did dress up in that red dressing gown. Um, But normally, if you see us working, we're just dressed like this. And And are the seats comfortable? (coughs) Not particularly. (laughs) No. (coughs) All right, next Hmm? question. Are you a supporter of AFC Bournemouth? Ah. (coughs) Your Bournemouth I know, I was. That's a difficult one. Very difficult, especially here. But, you know, football club fans have to be loyal, don't they? And my dad was a surgeon, and he used to be a surgeon to Arsenal Football Club. So I've got to be loyal. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) But I think Bournemouth would be my second one. Oh, well done. Good politician, eh? Good politician. (coughs) All right. All right? Do do, Do you forgive me? Do you forgive the Baroness, Sam? Sort of. (laughs) Next question. What does it mean for you to believe in Jesus? Thank you very much. I think it should mean everything to believe in Jesus. I'm so grateful to Jesus for his love and for all he is to me. But of course he is the great Lord whom we all worship. And for me, uh, that I try to make that the most important thing in my life. And I happen to be the Church of England. In the Church of England, you have a service called Confirmation. 
And I remember my confirmation text to this day, the text from the Bible in its Old Testament, but it's Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you be strong and have a good courage